earlier today, Spruce Point Capital Management put out a short thesis on Canadian waste hauler GFL Environmental. The stock dropped 8% on that report, which labeled the company uninvestable. GFL CFO Patrick Davuji responded to the report, calling it, quote, misleading. Earlier today, our very own Ed Hammond spoke up with Spruce Point's founder and CIO Ben Axler to discuss the report. We think that the leverage be, is being understated by almost 500 million Canadian. GFL issued um, tangible equity units. The ticker is GFLU. If you look at it, it's a hybrid security, part debt, part equity. The company would have you believe that the debt portion of those units um, is not debt. Pull up their press release and in their debt calculation, they ignore it. The C they've made loans to the CEO, capital leases. None of these things are accurately reflected in the company's leverage. So the leverage, the debt is higher than is being presented. The EBITDA we can't trust because the company's restating EBITDA, not saying why. So who knows what the real leverage is? The, the leverage could be twice as high and investors could really be stuck holding the bag here. But Ben, isn't there a case to be made that, look, it's a very young company, it's, or, or at least a very young public company, IPO'd only earlier this year. It's IPO'd in one of the most uh, sort of torrid and, and unpredictable markets, certainly that I can remember. Isn't there a case to be made here that it maybe is just finding its feet amid a very, very difficult time? Well, let's take a step back. Let's set the record straight. This company was founded in 2007. It failed three times to come public, and it came public in March during peak COVID crisis. Why? Because we believe they needed money at any cost. And so, no, I'm not giving them better of the doubt. We, we really don't understand why this company disclosed a material weakness of financial controls um, in SEC filings. Then that disappeared, and now we have two quarters of data points in a row where numbers aren't adding up, where they're being restated. So what's going on here? This is not a young company that I need to give them the doubt. This is a company, a mature company founded in 07 that I have serious concerns about. Yeah, you also, in, in your materials today, you raised some concerns about Mr. Davigi and uh, the CEO of GFO and some of the other senior executives there. Uh, explain to me why it's important, uh, the kind of company that you suggest they maybe keep um, potentially some bad decisions in their personal life. Why is that important for shareholders of this business? It didn't take us hard through simple internet searches to see that the CEO here is connected to people that have run afoul of many regulatory and, and legal challenges. I mean, you know, to the point where, you know, they are still doing business with an individual who pled guilty to environmental, um, you know, toxic dumping, and now they're doing business with him um, in their vehicle refurbishment. I mean, it just speaks to the quality of the management. And who's, who's the board looking out, you know, for, for shareholders here? I mean, we found that you know, board members haven't been accurate about their bi biographies and that they may be holding to one of the shareholders and now not looking out for the best interests of all the shareholders. So, um, you know, it's buyer beware when you see um, executives, again, not be entirely transparent about their work history. You know, we'll point out again that CEO DeVicke's bio has been modified to, to make it more difficult to find these connections. If he wasn't concerned, why not make it transparent to everybody? Well, not to introduce the whole industry, but isn't there a sort of expectation in the waste management industry that the, there are some bad practices? And indeed, if you are going to be a significant player in that space, occasionally you're going to probably do business with companies that haven't done necessarily the right things. Presumably, investors know this. But I don't, I don't accept that as a valid reason to invest in GFO. I mean, look, there are many public companies in the waste management space. You waste management itself, or public services, waste connections. You don't see this type of poor board. And I'll remind investors here, GFL's board members, none of them have ever worked in the waste management industry. So tell me that they're up to speed on the latest environmental rules and regulations. And I don't have any confidence in that. So, so no, investors shouldn't accept it. And I'll just make one other point. The valuation of GFL, if you adjust for our numbers, adjust for the debt that's not being accounted for is higher than some of the best of breed assets in this business. So just on a valuation basis alone, there's downside, never mind the fact that we don't have any confidence in the numbers. Okay, last question, Ben. You, you say this morning that the company could potentially go to zero as shares could be worthless. What would you need to see from GFL near term to prevent that outcome? I mean, I need to see valid explanations of why has revenue been restated? Why are margins being restated? Why doesn't CapEx add up? Why are they doing business with individuals that have pled guilty to environmental um, law breaking in the past? You know, wh wh why, why is the CEO, not only the CEO, but the SVP of the strategic management, hid or modified their bio 
to, 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 not invest, to not allow investors to see their prior business failures. I mean, if they can answer those questions to me, then maybe I'll get some comfort. But in the meantime, I'm staying true with the stock. I think it goes to zero. All right, we were just listening there uh, to the CIO of Spruce Point Capital Management, uh, Ben Axler, uh, uh, speaking a little bit earlier. And we should point out that GFL CFO's full statement is, the CEO, I should say, is that the report contains numerous inaccuracies, which GFL believes are solely intended to benefit the author of the report, who has disclosed that it stands to realize significant gains in the event that the stock price of GFL declines.